Well, a controversial verdict out of Jacksonville, Florida this weekend has touched off a national debate. 47-year-old Michael Dunn was convicted Saturday of attempted murder for shooting into an SUV full of teenagers back in November of 2012 after an argument escalated, escalated over loud music coming from the teen's car. Killed in the gunfire was 17-year-old Jordan Davis, who was in the car. Mr. Dunn was charged with first-degree murder in the killing of Davis, but that charge was declared a mistrial. The trial on that charge was a mistrial after jurors could not agree on a verdict, and yet he was convicted of attempted murder. So why is everyone so upset? <laughs> Greg Jarrett is a Fox News anchor and an attorney who covered the verdict as it came down. So I realized that they didn't get him on first-degree yeah. murder. Uh, right. The jury was hung on that. But he, several counts of attempted murder, and right. he's basically going to jail for the rest of his life. Why are people so upset? Well, they shouldn't be because um, there's really, in some ways, it doesn't make sense to retry him on the first-degree murder charge because he's gone. Uh, unless, of course, he prevails on appeal. And that was the first thing I, I said when I was on the air. This appears to be an inconsistent verdict. How can you find on attempted murder but not on murder? Uh, and that, indeed, is now the basis for a motion to set aside the verdict, and the defense attorneys say we're going to appeal on that basis. One of the things at play here, though, is there is an, there's a race issue. Yeah. The decedent is black, the defendant is white, and people have been comparing this case to the Zimmerman Trayvon Martin killing in Florida as well. They surely have. In the Zimmerman case, it was overt. It was talked about in the courtroom. Even the prosecutor addressed it in closing arguments. In this case, it was sort of subtle. Uh, it was hovering over the courtroom, but there was really no direct testimony on race, although references to the young men, rap crap is how they refer to their rap music and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of there. And we don't know, because the jurors aren't talking, how much it may or may not have played into their decision. And yet, watching some of the coverage of this trial and then the verdict that we saw over the weekend, you would, I mean, you would think that the guy got a complete acquittal. I mean, yeah. there was an anchor over on another news channel <laughs> who went ballistic, and you and he got in this angry Twitter war mm -hmm. um, because he said he was PO'd, I'll put it the polite way, right. out, outright personally. PO'd, personally, and you called him out on it in your tweet saying, you know, what do you, it's all about you? Right. You know, this is an anchor who set aside all measure of objectivity, and he acted at, on air as judge, jury, and execution, executioner, condemning the defendant as guilty, saying it was an open and shut case. My goodness, this is a fellow who was not inside the courtroom. He did not see all of the evidence. He did not watch all of the witness testimony. He was not in the jury room for deliberations, and he had the audacity to claim on air that he knows better than these jurors. And it incensed me. I've never publicly criticized another anchor, but I felt like Howard Beale in the movie Network. I wanted to throw up in the windows and say, I'm not going to take it anymore. So I did the modern day equivalent and I tweeted mm -hmm. some condemnation of his behavior. I he, thought it was outrageous. He came right out and said, I, I am outraged. I'm going to be outraged if the verdict is such. And the, the danger in having someone doing this is African-American uh, anchor yeah, at CNN. Right. The danger in doing that is it could stoke the fires and lead other people to believe that they too should be outraged. And then the situation can escalate. Right. And that in this situation, the judge actually came out, Judge Russell Healy, and, and praised the jurors, saying, look, they've embraced their civic duty. They are to be commended for right. that. Do you think that we as anchors have a special duty to watch it once the jury's rendered its verdict not to stoke fires? Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right about that. He appeared to be trying to gin up controversy. What was his motivation? Was it race? Was it to draw attention to himself? Was it to increase his ratings? I just don't know, but it was wrong and it was arrogant, and I said so. I said he was pompous and pretentious. This is a guy, he's not steeped in the law. He doesn't know anything about the law, judging by what he was doing on the air. He didn't explain but let me murder ask you this. versus manslaughter. Well, let me ask you this in his defense. Some people were outraged, thinking, how could they not convict on right. first degree? And so as an anchor, sometimes you give voice to what you think your audience may be feeling. And, and that's but you can do that in a fair and balanced way. I mean, he had legal analysts with him. He could have asked pointed questions representing those points of view and allow your legal analysts 
to voice that outrage if they feel that. Let your viewers voice that. It's not the role of a television anchor to be doing that. If, I mean, if he wants to offer his opinion as he does all the time, he really ought to have sort of a, a talk show, which is vested in opinion. Mm -hmm. um he said some very controversial things about Republicans, among others, uh, in the past as well. His so response to me was time. calling me an old man. That, that was beyond uh, the pale, Jarrett. <laughs> I don't feel old. Do I look old? <laughs> Absolutely not. As somebody who I think is pretty close to my own age, mm. at least you look it. I'm about to turn 59. Oh, and I'm actually oh, proud good of God. it. Oh, good God. A little experience <laughs> in maturity. Take it all back. He was right about you. See you, Greg. <laughs>